uh, I exactly I want to talk about the question here uh, that is at the bottom, and then we have uh, Michelle uh, talking how they're wrestling and dealing with this, uh, and Jacob uh, on a day to day basis. I think so. I think this will be very, very insightful. So, yeah. so, so maybe in that spirit, let's just uh, go on with your talk. Okay, all right. Um, shall I move this yeah. closer to you? So, hello, good afternoon. I'm, I'm Lucas, I'm a German Wikipedian. And I would like to talk about an issue that is as much about the law as it is about culture, Wikipedia culture especially. And the issue that I would like to talk about is privacy as a limit uh, to the sum of all human knowledge. And in my talk, I would like to share my experience both as a Wikipedian and as a lawyer specializing in privacy law about the subject that, from my opinion, uh, is not discussed by the community very often. And uh, looking at limits to the sum of all human knowledge uh, or spreading the sum of all knowledge as Wikipedians are doing every day, uh, copyright law comes to my mind first of all, uh, not really privacy, so I would like to start with, with privacy. And of course there's a love-hate relationship uh, between uh, Wikipedian community, the Wikipedia community and copyright. And Wikipedians try very hard every day to adhere to copyright law. and. As we all know, it can be very tricky. And over the years, uh, Wikipedians have built remarkable expertise in the field of copyright law. In a recent newspaper interview, Jimmy Wales said, we've all become somehow kind of amateur lawyers on things like copyright. And I find that to be very true. And the community's desire to respect copyright law is even one of the five pillars of Wikipedia. And also, at the same time, Wikipedians have been fighting for reasonable limits to copyright law itself. And uh, at this point, of course, I would like to congratulate Belgium, uh, which adopted Freedom of Panorama just last week. And I would like to con <laughs> and I especially I would like to congratulate Wikimedia Belgium for this great success. And there's actually some Belgian Wikimedians here in the room, and. Uh, Go, go Belgium, go Wikimedia Belgium. Congratulations, Dimi and, and your colleagues. He's sitting in the third row, or fourth row in the front. All right, uh, but this is not about copyright. This is about privacy, unfortunately. Uh, and compared to copyright and put in a Wikipedia context, privacy is just another limit to spreading the sum of all human knowledge, of all knowledge, as Toby has already explained. And put very, very, very simply, Privacy law tries to protect a person's private sphere by prohibiting others uh, from talking about it uh, in an invasive way. Just like copyright protects a person's creative works um, by prohibiting others to share them without uh, the creator's consent. Uh, but from my perspective, privacy is very tre treated very differently by Wikipedians. There are a number of reasons for that that I would like to explain in my talk. And one reason is that privacy, first of all, is very hard to grasp, even, even, even harder to grasp than copyright law. And there are no easy to follow rules, and privacy law is more about balancing different general principles, which we've already talked about and which I would like to uh, talk about in a minute as well. Um, also, I would like uh, to say that there are two cultural divides that we have to look at here. And one uh, cultural divide has already been mentioned. Uh, it is that we have divergent understandings of expression and privacy on each side of the Atlantic. Uh, from, from a Western perspective, at least, we have the United States as an example on the one hand, where the law and uh, the norms of society place much importance on the right of individuals to express themselves, which means that the freedom of expression or the freedom of speech often takes precedence over privacy. And taking my country, Germany, as an example, on the other hand, many continental or European countries, and nowadays also England even, uh, place comparatively high importance on the right of individuals to remain by themselves as they desire, uh, something that is even connected to the principle of human dignity in German law. And as a European law, I find it very interesting how much American legal culture has influenced our project as a whole. Of course, uh, Wikipedia comes from America, and, uh, so... Uh, that is that is, we, we have gained some American influence from that. But it's not just about uh, the cultural division between uh, America and Europe, um, it's also about Wikipedia culture. Um, and I think even, even more so. Uh, 
the issue is that the, the image that Wikipedians have of themselves compared to the rest of society is uh, relevant here. Wikipedians, in the end, are idealists. As we all know, our vision is to make the sum of all knowledge accessible to every person on the planet. Therefore, we try to collect and share information about nearly every subject imaginable. And this ideal of an encyclopedia is rooted in French Enlightenment philosophy, after all, and it gives us a strong belief in our role as providers of an unfettered access to information. We see ourselves as neutral conveyors of facts, and we see that work as a service to society as a whole. We want to present objective, adequately sourced facts, nothing but the truth. Therefore, privacy does not have great importance in the Wikiverse to begin with. And this leads to headlines like this one. Uh, of course, this is how the newspapers put it. I'm sure this is not how Jimmy said it, but uh, it says that Wikipedia warns against French attempt to extend EU privacy law globally. And this is exactly what we're talking about. What law applies and where does it apply and which courts get to decide this. So um, for these two cultural re uh, reasons that I've just explained, privacy has a very tough stance uh, when it comes to writing Wikipedia articles. And I think that we need to change our approach towards privacy. We should acknowledge our shared responsibility that we have as a community um, towards the individuals that we write about. In my opinion, the right to privacy places significant limits on how we can spread the sum of all knowledge and put very, very strongly, uh, I think that the community has been ignoring this so far. There is one exception to this, however. Um, the principle of privacy is in fact valued very, very highly when it comes to the user's own, or the community member's own, inviolable privacy. At the same time, they ignore the privacy of others, both in the core rules and beyond. And uh, I'm also a member of the Privacy Ombudsman Commission, so I have experienced how important it is to Wikipedians to protect their anonymity, for example. And um, with its enormous reach, uh, Wikipedia, the community, Wikipedia community has to accept that it cannot simply report everything about everybody with relevance or notability being the only limiting factor. Biographies, especially, should distinguish between information from a person's public sphere and personal information that is invasive and thus should not be published in an article that is freely accessible on the web. And uh, when we discuss a person's life in a Wikipedia article, it is, sorry, it is not just about being on the good side, because of course Wikipedians believe they are on the good side, but that's not enough. Uh, it's not enough to just respect all the community rules and standards. Not every bit of personal information that is deemed relevant for Wikipedia and that can be adequately sourced is of such importance for the public interest that it outweighs a person's right to privacy. So we have to make a case-by-case -case assessment here. And as a community, we need more and better rules with regards to privacy. Drafting such rules is tough, I know, and uh, even more so when the rules are all about balancing different principles and when they are not about bright lines uh, that can be easily understood and followed. This is why, as a community, as a movement, we need a broader discussion within, uh, about privacy law and privacy awareness. And, of course, also, I'm fully aware that uh, there are always two faces on a medal, uh, there are countless examples of individuals claiming that certain pieces of information violate their, violate their privacy when in fact they don't. And I'm sure that Jacob and Michelle will give count, have countless examples in store for that. And I understand that their work is very important uh, in defending our content against these threats. Um, but from my personal, uh, in my personal opinion, in many cases we simply push back against each and every attempt to raise a privacy-related matter without looking at the merits. Uh, and looking closer at this issue, uh, I found three excuses that the community brings up for this behavior. 
So there's three, as Toby earlier discussed, there's three things that always come up again, uh, all the time when discussing these problems that I would like to debunk, actually. So the first one, actually, is that we point to our sources. Uh, the idea behind this is that if a piece of information is found elsewhere, be it in a newspaper or in a book or even in a scholarly article or publication, it cannot be private and therefore we think that it does not need to be elitist because it's accessible elsewhere. And from a privacy law um, perspective, that is not an excuse. Just because someone else has violated a person's privacy, that does not mean that everybody else is allowed to do so. So we have to make up our own mind. And the second excuse is to point at the subject. As I said before, Wikipedians are idealists, and we very much think that we are on the good side, and we like that. Uh, accordingly, sometimes we stylize our subjects as being on the bad side. It could be that they are criminals, so because they're criminals, we can, we can say everything about them. Or these, these, these people have violated our own community rules uh, by engaging in paid editing, for example, or by threatening uh, legal actions against us but we don't get to make the rules. Um, I think that we should keep in mind that these subjects, when they, when they approach us, they might just be exercising their legal rights. And the third excuse that I often hear finally has an actual connection with privacy law, but only at first glance. Uh, often we, we observe that when, when uh, a subject, when a person has passed the threshold to be notable enough, for an individual Wikipedia article, we are treating this as a free pass to report on each and every bit of information about this subject. Uh, it might come as a surprise to some, but privacy law does not uh, think in terms of notability. Uh, the law looks, as I said, uh, looks at striking a balance between the public interest and an individual's private sphere. And the European Code of Human Rights has been crystal clear about the fact that celebrities, even megastars, have enjoy a right to privacy, just as everybody else does. So even though someone might be a public figure, and even though the public might have significant interest in them, there are always areas in a person's life that have to be remained secret. And needless to say, that is often extremely difficult to draw the line in these cases. And, as we've mentioned it before, um, the European Court of Justice's Google Spain decision, decision is interesting in two ways here. First, um, it underlines the rule that while the, public interest in a, while the public interest in a certain piece of information may outweigh uh, an individual, per, individual person's privacy at a certain point, uh, the European Court of Justice strongly emphasized privacy as a core principle of European law, as I already said before. And the other core holding of the European Court of Justice is uh, also interesting that Google was held liable for a search result that only led to the website with the infringing content. And the ruling says that even if Google is only acting as a sort of intermediary here, um, only giving access to this information that is really held elsewhere, uh, Google was sentenced to delete the mere search result. And for, 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 from, especially from an American point of view, this is unimaginable. Uh, but uh, to explain the, the thinking of the judges here, um, the plaintiff said, this is what really violates my privacy. It's not this, this obscure website where they can find this age-old report of, about what happened years ago. Uh, what violates my privacy is that every time someone enters my name into a Google search bar, this pops up, and this can easily be found. And that is what, what affects my everyday life. And that is what therefore violates my privacy. And Wikipedia, of course, is not an intermediary like Google. Uh, the community makes its own decisions autonomously uh, when to include a certain piece of information in an article and when we curate our content ourselves. So, yeah, the right to be forgotten, it's a thing. Um, we will definitely face a rising number of claims regarding privacy and the right to be forgotten in the future. Therefore, and we can see that from the numbers published in the transparency report of the Wikimedia Foundation and if we ask the people, uh, the volunteers from the OTRS team, and um, 
it's important for us to accept that we must take measures to protect our subjects' privacy and to learn how to differentiate on a case-by-case -case basis, because this is the only way you can do it. Um, I don't know if, if Jimmy is in this talk, but uh, uh, it appears that I have a disagreement with him here, and also maybe with someone else in the audience, or on the podium even. <laughs> And so uh, I'll wrap up quickly so everybody can bring out their torches and pitchforks um, <laughs> in a minute. Um, I'll show you two examples so you can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, the first uh, one is a tweet uh, that shows you, um, it talks about the fact that says that um, celebrities, uh, or as a Wikipedian would say it, notable persons, yeah, uh, have a right to privacy just like everybody else. And from a Wikipedian perspective, uh, it means that just because the press is violating, is committing violations of the right of privacy in these examples, uh, that does not give us a justification to do the same. So we have to make up our own minds uh, and come up with a reasoning whether or not we can put something in an article and what we should leave out. So the second example that I would like to give you is an actual, uh, is, is an excerpt from the German uh, edition of InTouch. It's a uh, glossy magazine that some of you maybe know. Uh, you can't read this, it's in German anyway, but uh, it's about uh, an individual, a man who wanted to visit his wife in Australia, and he could not enter Australia because uh, the immigration officers denied him entry to Australia because they Googled him found the Wikipedia article about him, and in the Wikipedia article it said that he had committed a crime 28 years before. And then, therefore, he was denied entry to, into Australia. And from an American perspective, that's the way it is. Yeah? But from a European perspective, uh, when, you are, when you are punished for a crime and the punishment is over and time passes, from a European perspective, as time passes, you gain the right to, uh, to be forgotten or to, 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 to become a normal member of society again, uh, especially after 28 years. So this is an example where we as a community have to, have to you know, see the responsibility that we have on people's lives, like in this example that is, you know, of course, you know, a very strong example, but you know, this, is, this is what we are talking about. Um, so our community rules, uh, we have to look at them and uh, right now we are telling people when they want to change an article that they have to leave a request on the talk page. Uh, but I think you all agree that talk pages are not easily accessible to the average person. Um, and they're not easy to, to use uh, as they are to an experienced user. Also, most of all, I think this has already been said, nobody wants to discuss a violation of their own privacy with an anonymous community on a public talk page. Um, this is why uh, our common advice to leave a, message, leave a message on the talk page is not helping here. Therefore, the affected individuals often resort to addressing the OTRS volunteers, as we've heard before, and they then try to find a solution somehow in secret, more or less. And this makes the community suspicious about the change that are made uh, to biographies, and of course the high number of unfounded claims and the constant threat of PR editing makes this even worse. Therefore, these subjects simply give up because they see no recourse that helps them with their problem. And here the person said to the newspaper a journalist, the internet never forgets. But privacy law disagrees with this, so we have to come up with a way, as we've already discussed, for these people to, to approach us. Uh, we need to, because the current mechanisms uh, don't help in sorting this out, and then these individuals sometimes, sometimes when they, are, they, are, when they when think they have a strong case and where they think that they need, they need some, code of, some sort of recourse, they address the Wikimedia Foundation, and the Wikimedia Foundation legal team tells them, uh, we have a strong mandate by the community uh, to fight back against unfounded claims as much as we can. And then again, the lawyers of the Wikimedia Foundation uh, are Americans. And as I said before, they use different standards uh, as we do here in Europe. 
So this is, this is a tough topic. Uh, but to sum up and uh, to open the discussion, uh, I think that we need to acknowledge that privacy is a limit to the sum of all knowledge as we can publish it. And we need to think about these issues of privacy in a cultural context, actually. And we need to be mindful of our responsibility when we look for the proper balance uh, between privacy and freedom of speech in each individual case. And we need to be more accessible to those that are personally uh, affected by our project. Thank you very much. So, uh, questions, comments, torches, pitchforks? Let's open the discussion. There's a question here. I mean, uh, this case seems to me like it's not information, the real problem, but the use we make of it, because uh, um, what's wrong in that case is that they consider that crime to be something um, to be considered uh, in order not to make the, in that uh, person come to the nation. But um, that does not seem to me a real privacy problem, because Mm, there's nothing bad in that. So, so it's like a, um, a, um, the use we make of that information that is wrong. So how we interpret it, but uh, such as um, being uh, having suffering from cancer is not something to be ashamed of. Uh, I think it's something that uh, it, the culture must change, and not how. Um, we deal with uh, this topic of privacy. I, I, I know it is a delicate matter. What do you think about it? Well, you are a good example of someone from a post-privacy society, I would say. You say everything, I, I understand that maybe, of course, there are some buts here, but you say, well, everything can be public and only we as a society have to work on how we, we respond to this. For example, the immigration officer in Australia could have said, well, it was so long ago, I should leave him into the country, let him into the country anyway, and uh, not block him from entering the country. Um, but this is not how it works, uh, or how, how I think it should be. It should be my decision if I want to make uh, it public that I have cancer or not. It should not be the decision of someone else. Because my 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 personal my own body is is so private that I get to I get to make the call here, and um, also in an offline world, in a if there were no Wikipedia, uh, the immigration officer would ask in Australia would ask this person, uh, can you show me your criminal record? And then this person would go to the German police and ask for an official criminal record, and that criminal record would be empty because German criminal law says after a certain number of years, it's okay. You have served your time in prison or whatever, you have paid your, 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 the, the sum of money that you, you owe, and it's over. And then time has passed and you get a second chance. And uh, now it's us to decide if someone gets a second chance or not. Chance or not. And this is, this is tough, I think. There's a question here and there. Tomas has one. Um, oh, I, Hello. I kind of disagree with the examples because they're, the second one, I can't really believe that that was in accordance with our own, um, with our own policy. Mm. Where, was that, where was that information taken from? I do not think that was a verifiable source. Oh, it, so, was an, it was taken from a newspaper article, but it was taken from an old, very old newspaper article. That was, I assume, something you know, very localized, or it, it, or I think it's fully possible that that would not, would not, there could have been a discussion that that was not a relevant source, even if it was published. And the, f and I think it, the first example, 
is there are two very different things. You're right that they're about privacy, but the second one is a living person being stopped from, you know, traveling. The, the first one is, you know, the, the matter of whether, how we should judge um, how other sources treat information. They're, they're both about privacy, but they're two very different topics, and I think we still have no guidance from those two examples, in my view, because they are completely different discussions. The first one is, should we publish everything that sources, that other sources publish? And a lot of sources have published this. So suddenly it's about self-censorship. The second one is more like, what should we, ex how nitpicky sources should we accept? So I'm not saying that privacy shouldn't be respected. I'm more of a post-privacy person. Yeah, no, I think it's, we, we need more guidance. And going from case to case is just too difficult. We need to decide on something before we go into a case by case basis, because otherwise it will be the first, it will be individual precedents that will set the standard. And they well, it might be anything. It will be the first precedent that will set the case for everything, pretty much. Yeah, you're making a very, like very good point here, and I will just want to like to respond quickly um, because you talk about self-censorship, and it's exactly that. Some people call it self-censorship, other people call it applying privacy law, doing what the law says, so it's different. And of course, then you brought up sources again, which is of course important, and then of course I had one slide where I showed uh, the resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Wikimedia Foundation, where the Board of Trustees acknowledged our responsibility towards uh, living people that we write biographies about. So there is, there is a common ground that we could start a discussion from, that because in the, this common ground is that yes, we have, we have a responsibility, and yes, uh, we have to think about privacy and uh, personality rights, as we call it in, in Europe sometimes. All right. Here, yeah, there, there, there. Many questions. Let's go. To deny immigration, does it need proof? Oh, I think that I think I think the individual immigration officer just gets to decide. That's how it works. And then you have to, and if the, if the immigration officer sends you back, then you have to go back. That's, that's how it works. So they basically decide based on possible lies where they still had contradicting or legally official information that said there was no crime? Yeah, I, I think the law here gives a lot of leeway to the officer deciding on the individual case, yes. Is that how the rule of law should work? <laughs> I think that's, a, that's a, yeah, but an interesting point, yeah, of course. But maybe let's not discuss Australian immigration law too much. Maybe. And another question. Do we have privacy, or can we have privacy at all, if uh, global information awareness is a thing? Hmm. Yeah, that's post-privacy, as some people put it, yes. Tomasz. Well, if, uh, I think our discussion should start uh, uh, from the point uh, if the information, the pr private information is uh, somehow publicly important and how much it uh, hurts the person. And this is, uh, for example, in Poland, in such cases in the courts, such kind of, if it's weighted, and for example, when there is an information about politicians who did uh, some corruption even 20 years ago, but now he is important or she is important uh, for politicians, so this might be treated as a public, uh, in private information, but released for public good. Uh, but then there are a lot of strange different cases uh, uh, which are really d disputable. For example, uh, if a Polish uh, football player uh, who was uh, revealed that he is homosexual and he had problems simply still playing in the team. This is one, one of the cases and it was really a bad case because this guy was actually, first information was in Wikipedia. Then some newspapers took this from Wikipedia so someone has added the source from, uh, from these new newspapers and then it was sourced, yes? And then how to solve this problem, but 
The, the information was already public, but anyway, this is one of the cases when this information is not very important for public good uh, and really deeply hurt the person. Mm. So my personal judgment in such cases, for example, when I, I am dealing with such cases through OTRS system, so I'm just thinking whether it's something really important for public information or, or not, and if it's not, I'm just deleting this, that's it. So. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm not saying it's, if it's easy, it's super difficult, but running a website like Wikipedia, you know, it brings with it the responsibility. I think we have time for two more questions, maybe? Uh, I mean, just in the back and over here? I don't know. Thank you, good afternoon. Hello. Um, the touchstone for privacy law in almost every country that has uh, a data privacy regulation is reasonableness. You have to have reasonable measures in place to protect privacy, reasonable measures to remediate violations of privacy. Isn't it enough if we are just able to say that we have structures in place that are reasonable given the scope of the project, the millions of people involved? Isn't that enough for the, the courts and the, the legal systems that might get involved in some individual case if we're able to point to the structures we have and say, you know, look, given all the people who are involved in this project and the openness of it, you know, we're doing as, as good a job as can reasonably be expected, and we have this process in place, and that's, that's good enough. I mean, we, we can't have an absolute kind of guarantee that private information won't end up uh, in Wikipedia, uh, or that it'll be instantly remediated once someone complains about it. Well, having, having such, such procedures in place helps us avoid violations of privacy, but it does not give us anonymity. And these people uh, have a full right to go to the courts when they disagree with our decision. And often, very often, these cases involve very, very obscure articles that very few people are involved with, where our own community procedures fail because we don't have enough people dealing with it, where the swarm is too small, I would say. We're doing as good a job as we could be expected to do. Yes, but then they will sue us, and that's how we, they have to accept that. Just a quick comment. I, I watched in your presentation the use of the concept of the right to be forgotten. Uh, just to clear, uh, there's no right to be forgotten, because it's, it's an open discussion. There's a right to be forgotten, it's not a right. Many people who work privacy concerns into the world, there's half open discussion. I give you an example in my country that right to be forgotten is used to clear information about corruption, about use of, of illegal funds, you know? There's no privacy behind that use. It's used to, to delete information from people who have troubles, you know? So I think it's more clear that the so-called right to be forgotten, because in the traditional conception of digital rights, there is no use of right to be forgotten concept. I don't know what's your opinion, of course. I very much agree with you that there is abuse of the right to be forgotten, and I think Michelle will talk about this in a minute. But I disagree with you, and my slide was the right to be forgotten, it's a thing. So I think, I think now we have to give Michelle and Jacob some time to talk. So yeah, thank you for your questions.